Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Well, good morning. It's less than two weeks to Christmas. Are you ready? And what is it that gets you ready if you're not ready? What is it? Is it the singing? Well, if you like singing, we'll be doing it this afternoon at 3 o'clock. You'll hear our choirs, orchestras. Singing. We'll be able to sing along some with them too. For a lot of folks, that's what gets them ready. It's the singing. This time of year, my wife, she bakes more than any other time of the year, and I love the smell of baking in the house. I don't mind eating it either. So, for, and for some folks, it's the smells of Christmas. And one of those smells is we start bringing the outdoors indoors, fresh cut tree. And that's what gets a lot of folks ready is the smells. I remember when I was a kid, my father brought home a an artificial Christmas tree for the first time. It was a tree in a box. He was so proud of it. It looked like a great big bottle brush. But it didn't smell like anything at all. <laughs> and my sister, who's a little prone to the dramatic, she said, that thing doesn't even smell like a Christmas tree. You've, you've ruined Christmas. Who knew she needed the smells? Well, for a lot of folks, it's the smells that get them ready. And for other folks, it's, it's the hustle and bustle, the getting around, the hurry, hurry, hurry that makes Christmas for them. And I think some of that traffic, some of that hurry, some of that moving around that it's already started. Just this past week, I was at a, at a, at a stoplight and the, that, it was that Christmas red. And when it from, went from Christmas red to Christmas green in the car next to me, I saw the fella, I, I, I couldn't hear him, but I saw him. I think he said, Peace on earth. Or he might have said, goodwill toward men. I, 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 it just was kind of, he seemed to have that Christmas spirit and was very enthusiastic about it. For some folks, it's the hustle and bustle. What is it that gets you ready? Do you know how Matthew gets us ready for Christmas, for the coming of Jesus? He does it with a genealogy. Not the way most of us stand around the Christmas tree and say, hey kids, it's Ancestry.com. We're going to read about the, the Ancestry right here. Well, it's the way that Matthew does it. And so it's the way I'm going to do it this morning. Matthew chapter 1, starting with verse 1. This is what it says. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. To Abraham was born Isaac, to Isaac Jacob, to Jacob Judah and his brothers. And to Judah were born Perez and Zerah by Tamar. And to Perez was born Hezron, and to Hezron Ram, and to Ram was born Amminadab, and Amminadab Nashon, and Nashon Salmon. And to Salmon was born Boaz by Rahab. And to Boaz was born Obed by Ruth, and to Obed Jesse, and to Jesse was born David the king. And to David was born Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. And to Solomon was born Rehoboam, and to Rehoboam Abijah, and Abijah Asa, and to Asa was born Jehoshaphat. And to Jehoshaphat Joram, and to Joram Uzziah, and to Uzziah was born Jotham, and to Jotham Ahaz, and to Ahaz Hezekiah, and Hezekiah was born Manasseh, and to Manasseh Amon, and to Amon Josiah, and to Josiah were born Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. 
And after the deportation to Babylon, to Jeconiah was born Shealtiel, and to Shealtiel Zerubbabel, and to Zerubbabel was born Abayud, and to Abayud Eliakim, and to Eliakim Azor, and to Azor was born Zadok, and to Zadok Akim, and to Akim Eliud, and to Eliud was born Eleazar, and to Eleazar Matan, and to Matan Jacob, and to Jacob was born Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom was called, born Jesus, who is called Christ. Are you ready yet? Well, if you're not ready, I still have a little bit more to go. Therefore, all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the time of Christ, 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For it is he who will save his people from their sins. Matthew tries to get us ready by reading a, a genealogy. 42 names in that genealogy. And then he gets to the bottom of the genealogy, and, and in verse, verse 17 he says, Therefore. Well, that's an important word in the Bible. Whenever you, you see therefore, you want to know what therefore is there for. Therefore points to everything that's past so that he can point to what comes next. And what comes next is peculiar. <laughs> because what comes next says that that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. In other words, see those, those 42 names that we read before? Let's erase those because he was born of the Holy Spirit. Is that peculiar to you? That's peculiar to me. Why read the 42 names if you're going to say, now let's erase all those because he was born of the Holy Spirit. We tend to think genealogies are about a bloodline are about a bloodline. And, and he goes all the way back to Abraham. Why? Why? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look. It says to Abraham. Now, Abraham, if, if you're going to start a family tree, Abraham is where you want to start. Abraham was a friend of God. Abraham was the father of the faithful. Abraham is a root that's strong. Abraham is, is one, you, we love to point back to, to Abraham as, as the root of the family tree. Because it's from Abraham where we get our identity. Not who we are, but whose we are. Whose we are. And we started with Abraham. Yeah, Abraham was born Isaac and Isaac Jacob. Well, wait a minute. Jacob's not necessarily somebody that you want on your family tree. Jacob was a deceiving, conniving liar. That's the only way to put it. Abraham stole his own brother's birthright and blessing. His father Isaac called out for his brother, said Esau. And Jacob was the one who answered. He said, here I am. He said, well, you know, it sounds like Jacob, not like Esau. I was like, Esau. He said, yeah, here I am. And he said, well, let me feel your arm. His dad couldn't see well. So he said, let me feel your arm. Because Esau had hairy arms and Jacob didn't. So his father reached out. Well, Jacob had prepared. That's how conniving he was. He put an animal skin on his arm. And when his father reached out, he felt the, 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 the fur of the animal skin. He said, well, it sounds like Jacob. But, you know, sounds like Esau. Sounds like Jacob feels like Esau. And so he says, come here, let me kiss you. Well, Jacob had already prepared that too. He knew that if he got close enough to, for his father to kiss him, and he smelled the way that Jacob smelled, that, that his, his, his disguise, it'd, it'd be uncovered. So he put on his brother's clothes so he would smell like his brother. He went close to his father. His father kissed him and said, well... 
Sounds like Jacob. Smells like Esau. Feels like Esau. Must be Esau. So he gave him the blessing and he gave the birthright that was his brother's. And you know what his brother got? You know what Esau got? Bupkus. That's the Hebrew word. Zero. He got nothing. Because Jacob. Jacob stole it all. And he's here on the family tree. You follow along. You don't have to follow along until you get to Judah and his brother's. Perez by, Zer- by Tamar. Tamar is a woman. And she's on the family tree. You don't trace the, f- the bloodline through the women. But here she is. And we don't hear a lot of stories from the pulpit about Tamar. And there's a good reason. Because all those stories are X-rated stories. But here she is on the tree. And there are three women on this tree. But as a matter of fact, there's Tamar and there's Rahab. Well, she was a harlot. And that's That's all we're going to talk about that story this morning. And then there's Ruth. Now, Ruth is who you want on your tree. Ruth was loyal. Ruth was faithful. A loving woman. That's the kind of, that's the kind of branch you want on your family tree. And you follow it on down and it says, Obed by Ruth and to Obed, Jesse and to Jesse was born David the king. Now, everybody wants David the king on their family tree. I mean, a child, this, this talk can tell you, David was the one that with five smooth stones, a slingshot, and the Spirit of God, he slayed Goliath. He slayed the giant that even the army of Israel couldn't slay. Here's a, a, a shepherd boy with a five stones, slingshot, and the Spirit of God. Did what the armies couldn't do. He's on the family tree. We like to see that. But you follow that along and you say, and to David was born Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Doesn't even mention her name by her. Well, we all know who she is. We all know who she is. David was king. He was walking out on the roof of his palace and he saw a woman, Bathsheba. She was taking a bath and he says, I... I'll have her. Bring her on up to the palace. And after the affair, she said, maybe you know my husband, Uriah. Wait, he's one of her, one, one of David's soldiers. And he's caught. He's caught. He, he's caught and he makes it worse by trying to cover it up. He, he calls his generals and says, put him on the front line. And in the heat of battle, pull back. And they expect it to happen. He's killed in battle. Her husband's killed in battle. And, 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 and David pretends to be the, the caring king. Yes, I, 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 I love my veterans. Love their widows. Hate it that he's lost in battle. They bring the widow on up to the palace. Cold and calculated and here it is here it is it seems like there's some 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 limbs on this family tree that are strong and some limbs that are broken and some limbs that are strong and broken some limbs don't seem like they belong here at all so what is it that he's trying to tell us i'm not going to read the whole family tree but i would like to the point to Verse 10, it says, and to Hezekiah was born Manasseh. You would be hard-pressed to find a worse king than Manasseh. Manasseh would worship anything that wiggled. He walked through the fire. He built idols. He was this, he was, he'd do the witch dance. It, Manasseh was just a horrible, horrible king. And if he was a horrible king, his son was even a worse king. His son was Amon. His own people killed him after two years. And, and if the, the father's worse and the, 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 the son's even worse than that, is there any hope for the grandson? Well, the grandson is Josiah. And Josiah, at eight years old, well, he was really more preacher than he was king. He called the people back to a relationship with God to rebuild the temple. that it seems that 
the manger that Jesus is laid in is a manger of heartache, a manger of suffering, a manger of sin, a manger where at the right time the Savior, Jesus, was born. That in the middle of the, the heartache, there's hope, and his name is Jesus. He's the Savior. In the middle of the suffering, there's strength. It's Jesus, and he's the Savior. In the middle of the, the sin, there's forgiveness. And it's Jesus, the Savior. This is the arena that he's born in. This is the arena that he comes to. And this is the arena that, that Matthew introduces Jesus, the Savior. And for 28 chapters, he tells us his nature. That he heals the sick. He gives sight to the blind. He raises the dead. He gives forgiveness to those who are sin sick. And after the, the healing, after the, the life, after the forgiveness, you would think that the people would surround and say, let's follow him. You would think they'd say, let's worship him. But instead, they say, give us Barabbas, crucify him. And that's what, that's what they do. They nail him to the cross. And you'd expect to hear the words like anybody. Eh, well, you don't love me. I'm not going to love you. But that's not what we hear. What we hear from the cross is, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. And he rose from the grave. He rose from the grave to live his life. To live his life through you and through me. So that he wouldn't just be away in a manger that he would be here in a heart. And that's the message. That's the message of our Savior. The message that, that, that Matthew can't wait to tell. That where there's heartache, call on the name of Jesus because he brings hope. Where there's Suffering, call on the name of Jesus because he brings strength. Where there are those that are sin sick, call on the name of Jesus because, because he brings forgiveness. And when he rose from the grave, he, he, he rose to give that hope, that strength, that forgiveness to you and me. Not long ago, but this day, this morning, it may be that you, you came to hear about a, our Savior away in a manger, and that's the story that we hear. But the good news is that he's not away in a manger, that he's here in a heart. And you can receive him today. It may be that you came this morning with heartache, that you're in a place that's just plain old hard. That's not foreign to Jesus. And so in this day, call on his name that he might offer you hope. Or maybe that this day that you're in that place, you're in that place where you're suffering. It's hard to say it out loud, but, but you know you are. And you don't need anybody to tell you, but you know it. Call in his name because he brings strength. Even in the middle of the suffering, it's not the kind of strength that, that we have on our own. It's a strength that comes only from his Holy Spirit, the risen Christ. Call on his name, and his name is Jesus because he'll give you that strength. Or it may be, this morning, you've blown it. You've blown it one more time. And that you feel, you feel far, far from, from Christ. 
that sin has gotten the best of you. Know that our Savior doesn't depend on our feelings. That he came that we might lean on, that we might trust in him. That we might be the friend of God. We might be the one that leans on him and we, we call his name, Jesus. Jesus, to, to forgive us our sins. And when we call on his name, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us, to cleanse us. That's not just a long time ago, but that's, that's Jesus, our Savior today. And that you want to call on him not to, to be away in a manger, but at home in your heart. Well, I want to pray with you this morning. Let's pray together. Jesus, you came not just for a good story or a memory a long time ago, but to live in us now, this day, here. That the power of the risen Christ, that your spirit would live in us now, today. We need that power, the power of forgiveness. And you're not reluctant to give it to us. It's that we're reluctant to ask. But now, in our heart of hearts, we ask for that forgiveness that you, that you, might, that you might cleanse us, that you might change us, that you might give us strength we don't have, power over sin. Jesus, this morning, it may be that and we're in that hard place and we need your strength in the middle of suffering. We need your hope in the middle of the heartache because that's the world we're living in right now. Give us ears this morning that we not only hear the good news but we begin to live it, to call on your name that we might know your hope and your strength that we might know you, Jesus, Savior, and be changed. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir, an organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.